Hey everybody, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Let's start with the bad news. In the English language, we have several different categories of pronouns. And those categories have multi-syllable, complicated names. And you're going to have to learn what pronouns go into what category, and you're going to have to be able to identify them. That's bad. But the good news is that unlike some other parts of speech, there's a limited number of pronouns in the English language. You can basically learn all of the pronouns. So, you get to do lots of practice. Also, I'm going to post on Angel a complete list of every pronoun and the category it belongs into. So you'll have that to help you out. So that's good. In the meantime, let's look at some specific examples so that I can teach you what those different categories mean. The first category of pronoun that we're going to talk about are possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns are pronouns that demonstrate ownership. They're pronouns that we sub in for possessive nouns. So a noun like uh, Mr. Kennedy in the possessive form is Mr. Kennedy's with the apostrophe S, like Mr. Kennedy's notebook or Mr. Kennedy's Ferrari, right? We can substitute in the possessive pronoun his, or since I'm the one talking, mine or my. Let's look at this example sentence. Oedipus wanted his wife not to be his mother. What that sentence is really saying is Oedipus wanted Oedipus's wife not to be Oedipus's mother, but it sounds pretty bizarre to say it that way, so we use some possessive pronouns. There are two, and they're both the word his. We're talking about his wife and his mother. Pronoun gets used twice because Oedipus ends up in a pretty awkward situation where his wife is indeed his mother, which is sad. Moving on. Interrogative pronouns are pronouns that ask questions. The antecedent of an interrogative pronoun is going to be sometimes difficult to determine because it's standing in for a word that we don't necessarily know. It's a question word. Who, where, when, why, how. In this sentence, who told Oedipus that he murdered his father, there's one interrogative pronoun. It's the pronoun who. The antecedent of the pronoun who is the identity of the person who told Oedipus that he murdered his father. That's a complicated question to answer even when you've read the play, so it would be pretty difficult to sub something in. The answer would be something like, Jocasta told Oedipus that he murdered his father, but that's not entirely accurate. It's a complicated story. Anyway, moving on. The next category of pronouns we're going to talk about are demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns demonstrate. They point to specific objects. When we hear a speaker using a demonstrative pronoun, we hear them pointing to specific things. This, that, these, those, those other ones. So in this sentence, when he heard that fact, Oedipus was upset, there's one demonstrative pronoun. It's the pronoun that. The speaker of that sentence is pointing to a particular fact, that one. In this case, the fact, the antecedent is he murdered his father. That's a specific fact that's being pointed to by the demonstrative pronoun that. Let's talk about relative pronouns. Relative pronouns are a little tricky. Relative pronouns are hard because we reuse some of these same words that we've already used in different pronoun categories. But relative pronouns relate one part of a sentence to another. They form connections. So in the sentence, Oedipus didn't know who he really was or that he was Jocasta's son, there are two relative pronouns. The relative pronouns are who and that. They relate these clauses, he really was and he was Jocasta's son, to the rest of the sentence. Indefinite pronouns are pronouns that stand in for undefined or indistinct individuals or groups of individuals. They're pronouns like everyone, everybody, anyone, anybody. There's not a specific person or persons being referred to by that pronoun. So in the sentence, anyone who learned what he did would be upset, we have an indefinite pronoun. It's anyone. The, there is no particular antecedent for that pronoun. It's pointing to a vague, indistinct group. The last category of pronouns that we're going to talk about are reflexive and intensive pronouns. I put them together because they're the same words. These are those self pronouns. I self, myself, yourself, himself, herself, their self, itself, right? If you look at this sentence, you yourself might be disturbed when Oedipus learns how he had doomed himself. 
you heard two of those words, yourself and himself. One of them's a reflexive pronoun and one's an intensive pronoun. When we say you yourself, we're adding intensity to the pronoun you. Yourself, in this context, is an intensive pronoun. It emphasizes, it adds intensity to you, its antecedent. The pronoun himself is a reflexive pronoun. It reflects back to an earlier word in the sentence. What we're really saying is Oedipus learns how he had doomed Oedipus. But it's awkward to say it that way because we can just use a reflexive pronoun, himself, and reflect the action back to the antecedent Oedipus.